Recently, Mike Tyson was on the Joe Rogan Experience, where he shared his story of being hypnotized early on in his boxing career by his coach, Cus Amato and hypnotist John L. Halpin. You know what else Custom Milo used to do with me? He used to take me to a hypnotist. The more I listened to Mike talk about his experience with hypnosis, the more I could see how he was able to cultivate the killer instinct he became so famous for. If you relax, you go under, you totally f focus on blackness, nothingness. Right. You go under and you're just being the savage, intelligent animal, animal. You're just working, you're gonna do this, you're gonna be a ferocious animal, you're gonna fight, puff, puff, both hands to the body, you'll use your jab, you'll do this and ferocious. When most people think of hypnosis, they imagine a TV prank on some unsuspecting subject. Let your legs become stuck, your back oh become stuck. Gosh. Go to sleep. No! Oh my God! But the truth is that hypnosis is a psychological technique with proven efficacy for helping people improve their emotional well-being and performance in the real world. So how much of a role did hypnosis play in helping Tyson become one of the best boxers of all time? Only Mike can answer that. But what I can share with you in this video is how Tyson was able to use tools like hypnosis and other mental techniques to cultivate the killer instinct that led to him becoming a world champion. The foundation for hypnosis being so effective for Mike was an amazing mentor, Cus Amato, guiding him on his journey to self-discovery and self-actualization. Cus believed to become a great fighter, you first had to develop great character. And we can assume this was a consistent theme in the hypnosis sessions that Tyson received. The mark of a great fighter when he has character plus skill. Because a fighter with character and skill will often rise and beat a better fighter because of this. Cus was not trying to make Tyson something he was not. Instead, his intention was to peel back the layers of insecurity Mike had in an early age to uncover his peak potential in the ring. And try to find out how many layers I have to peel off of experiences that, that, that detrimental and otherwise till I get down to the man himself. Tyson shared how most of their work together was on the mental side of boxing. These conversations helped to take the hypnotic messages Mike was receiving on the unconscious level and bring them to the conscious level so you could fully embody them. Speaking to me on different occasions about what it's going to take to be a champion, not physically, training and all that, that's just to prepare you, to make your body become hard and ready. But when you train and exercise, mentally it tells you I'm in shape and no one can beat me. I could go as many rounds as possible as the job's necessary and required to go. But other than that, it's just the mental aspect of when you talk to me and develop strong character. And that's the main aspect. One of the greatest things Cus did from Tyson as a mentor was judge him on his effort instead of just the outcome. That the most important part of any good fighter is self-confidence, their self-perception. And so as long as Mike Tyson was trying, he would always say, you're doing great, Mike. Awesome work, Mike. You can do it, Mike. Even when his techniques weren't perfect, even when he knew he would screw up the method, he would push him forward with positivity. This constant positive affirmation in combination with the hypnosis sessions led to Tyson developing a sense of self-belief and confidence that made him unstoppable. He just kept saying these great things about us. So this guy, I didn't know this guy was queer. He just kept saying great things. He said, man, you're a great fighter. He just kept saying, you're the greatest. You do splendid. You look great. You're looking better. He just kept, kept giving me um, compliments and compliments. The hypnosis and positive affirmations eventually sunk in at such a deep level that Tyson began to do his own self-talk that he became so famous for. It's hard out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. The reason his self-talk was effective was because he would do it with such strong emotion that it would energetically program this message at the deepest part of his being. And why? Fight anybody my trainer put me in with because I'm confident I could be any fighter in the world. As anybody could see, I'm almost a master at invading the punches coming at me. The best. I'm the best. I'm not a textbook fighter or jab right hand. I fight to win. I do everything to win. My objective is to win. To win. Totally to win. A la Tony Robbins' incantations. So in incantations, not only you speak it, but you embody what you're saying with all the intensity you can. In addition to the self-talk, Tyson would do very intentional visualization. Let's try to aim to the back of my opponent's head. Fantasize my punch going through them in and out of the back of their head. Mike's visualization was so powerful because he was so specific about his intentions in the ring. Every punch is thrown with bad intention and the speed of the devil. This may sound harsh to someone outside of boxing, 
But for anyone in the sport, you know you need this kind of intention and killer instinct to perform your best. One of the greatest benefits I believe Tyson received from his hypnosis sessions was the ability to experience ego death. In other words, accepting failure as a real possibility and moving forward regardless. Cuss taught Tyson that fear was something he could use to his advantage. All during my training, I've been afraid of this man. I thought this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me, but, that, but I always stayed afraid of him. But as close as I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. The final thing I want to touch upon in this video was the use of triggers to unlock Tyson's killer instincts these instincts most likely originally were installed during his hypnosis sessions or through deep visualization. A trigger is something that can be installed during a deeply relaxed state to create a specific emotional response in a given situation. Here are some triggers Tyson used. Most of Tyson's triggers were created through his rituals, starting with prepping his gloves, then using his walk out to the ring to trigger supreme confidence. The closer I get to the ring, the more confidence I get. He even used his music to trigger a locked in flow state. Obviously Mike Tyson behind that crowd coming in. It's interesting to note that Mike Tyson selected his pre-fight music, just noise. Every once in a while you hear the clanging of chains. Everything that Tyson does is intimidating. Once in the ring, he used his opponent as the final trigger before the fight. I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom, and one of his eyes may move, and then I know I have him. Finally, during the fight, he used being hit as a trigger to staying calm and aware. When you get hit, that's when you gotta be calm. That's when you gotta be calm, when you get hit. Combining hypnosis with an incredible mentor self-talk, visualization, and emotional triggers led to Tyson building a bulletproof mindset and eventually becoming one of the best boxers of all time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and hit that red notification bell so you never miss another mindset breakdown. Thanks so much for watching.